Hello and welcome to the Daily Meal for Wednesday the 25th of October 2023. We're going to start off today's video by catching up with the odds for Mill's next permanent manager. Because I think after last night's game, we pr I think we need one. Um, you've got, I don't think that's Adam Barrett. And I think that the odds reflect that. Um, you've got a player playing absolute dog shit in the middle of the park, namely Billy Mitchell. Uh, I'm not a Billy Mitchell hater. Uh, I'm just, he was atrocious in that first half. And you wait until the 66 minutes to take him off. Whereas the other manager took two players off at half time. Billy should have come off at half time. Changes should have been made. And we may have won that game. You didn't, and we didn't. We lost it. So, blue means the odds are shortening. That means it's more likely to happen if you're not a gambling man. Reds mean, uh, red means the odds are drifting, getting larger. That means it's uh, less likely to happen. You all notice Kevin Muscat is no longer the favourite for the mill job. He has gone out to 8-1 to one at Bet Victor. Um, despite the football insider nonsense that I uh, brought you in yesterday's video. Uh, Michael Bill is now 2-1 to one favourite. Drifting, uh, shortening, shortening, shortening. Uh, Neil Warnock is as short as 2.5-1, to 5-2. to two, with Sky bets. Um, now why is this? What's happened? What's, what has happened? Well, I will tell you. Because we all know, in this day of social media, people put up posts and we look for meaning in them. What does it mean? What does it mean? Well, Michael Bill has put on his Instagram, he's put up this picture. Michael Bill 4980. Now, what does that mean? Um, I've got to say, um, I don't get it. Why do people put their date of birth in their social media names and profiles? I think it makes you look like a bit of a wally, to be honest with you. Um, but here we go. Uh, football manager of some repute. Uh, with his date of birth in his uh, account name. Whoa. Uh, now. Do you know... Where this picture is taken. L London? London, yes, that is correct. London. You can can you narrow it down further? London Heart. You see what he's written there? London Heart. Uh, London Love. So one presumes that this photograph was taken by Michael Bill, 4980. That means he was born on the 4th of September 1980. Himself, the man himself. Uh, so that suggests that he is in London. He is here in London. He is amongst us. He is amongst us in the big city in London. Um, now, who knows exactly where this is? Are you, are, are you a geo guesser? Are you a geo wizard? Do you know that game? And do you know how to play it? I can tell you where this is. If you like to know, and if you haven't already got it, this is St. James's Park in Westminster or there or thereabouts. Um, so that would suggest that um, I believe, I'm not too sure, that back in the day uh, when um, John Verrilson came to London to Millwall Games, he would stay at the St. James's Hotel uh, near St. James's Square. Um, are the interviews being conducted in an, over, uh, in an hotel near St James's Park uh, that would suggest that Michael Bill is interviewing for the real job and that's probably why he is shortened to 2-1 to one to become the next permanent Millwall manager whatever you think about that I think a lot of people don't want that to happen uh, I think he's got the reputation of being I don't know He's chasing something. What is he chasing? Obviously, he was at QPR. They were top of the table. Now, you could say, looking at QPR today versus back then, they seem to become a bit of a basket case. Now, did he know that that was the case behind the scenes and he wanted to get out of there and he saw an opportunity and took it? 
that may be the case. That may be the case. Maybe they were top of the table in November. He was talking about maybe what money is available in January, and they said, well, nothing. In fact, you're going to have to sell some players. And he said, oh, I do not like that, and maybe that's why I bailed out. I have no idea. I'm not a QPR fan. I don't know. What might, Maybe he didn't like it as Les Ferdinand. Um, and now he's gone, so... Maybe. Uh, but it seems from the outside in that he's chasing something. Is he chasing a pound note? What is he? Ch is he chasing prestige? Is that why he went to Glasgow Rangers? Obviously, he had connection with Glasgow Rangers because he was up there with Steven Gerrard uh, as the assistant. Uh, but it seems from the outside that he's overly ambitious, too much so, and that he's literally just chasing, chasing money, chasing prestige, chasing something. And he's just a gun for hire. He doesn't give a shit about Millwall. Millwall is just a stepping stone onto whatever the thing he is chasing. Only he knows what, what that is. Um, so a lot of people are not big fans of his in, in that case. Because that's, like I said, looking from the outside in. That's what it seems to be. Um, but who knows? Who knows? Um, is he going to stick around for four years like Gavin Rout? Probably not. Does he need to? Um, if he gets the squad into the playoffs this season and then pisses off at a, in the summer, hey, job done. We go, but then we go again trying to find another manager. Um, and then what do we do? We go back to the people that we rejected for this guy. Um, what's he going to do with the backroom staff? Is he going to utterly decimate them? Or like, are we going to have people that can progress? Is he just going to completely bomb people out? Who knows, but... Uh, yeah, so that's why uh, he's gone to 2 to 1. Taking pictures in St. James's Park. Coded messages being put out into the ether. Now, Neil Warnock, I haven't looked at his Instagram. I don't know if he has an Instagram or if he knows how to use it. Maybe it's just full of selfies of him taken from under the chin. I don't know. Old people don't really know how to use uh, their phones, do they? Ha 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 ha. But he has shortened to 5 to 2. Um, so maybe someone's seen him. Any cabbies? Any Millwall cabbies? You, do you want to drive around St. James's tomorrow and see if you can spot any uh, famous uh, football managers? Um, I don't know. But let us know if you do. And uh, we'll see how they go. But there you, there you go. It seems he's there in person. You would think in these days that they might do it over, over Skype. Um, does that mean Kev, Kevin Muscat drifting... Like, are they expecting him to fly into London to to do the interview? I don't know about that. So obviously that might be done on Skype as well, or what's well not Skype, but just online Skype. People used to use Skype. Now they just use anything. Didn't they Zoom was it Zoom? Yeah, or Microsoft Teams, whatever it's called. Um, so we don't know, but I think certainly after the game the other day, Adam Barrett is. I think it's not. It's not his cup of tea. He had decisions to make and he literally just like Gary Rout waited to make them. Um, when you've got a player so off the pace that Billy Mitchell was, you need to pull the plug. Um, even if that's upset some people, you need to do what you need to do for the greater good. And you didn't do it. Um, so if you'd have done it at half time, we might have ended up winning that game. Um, but yeah, there you go. Michael Bill, everyone. Next Millwall manager, what do you think? Uh, so we're going to move on. Some more post-match comments. We've got praise for George Honeyman. Yeah. I would, uh, obviously, in terms of man in the match, like in terms of how do you pick a man in the match for a losing team? But he was, for a player who come off the bench, I think he'd done a lot in the game. He probably did more stuff in his short time on the pitch than a lot of other players did in the 90 minutes on the pitch. So... He was outstanding and he didn't hold back, which you think he's coming back from an injury, a long-term one, that he might take it easy. No, he did not. He certainly, he went for it. Uh, this is from southernnews.co.uk. I'm really pleased for George. Adam Barrett delivers praise for Honeyman after his long-awaited Millwall return. A 29-year-old went off injured in the very first game of pre-season but returned last night against Blackburn. 
Adam Barrett said he is pleased to see George Honeyman back after the midfielder made his long-awaited return to first-team action last night against Blackburn Rovers. The 29-year-old has been out of action since the very first game of pre-season when a quad injury saw him go off during a 2-0 win over Gillingham in July. Uh, he had been on the bench in previous four games against Swansea City, Plymouth Argyle, Hull City and Preston North End, but last night was the first time he was given game time. Honeyman made the most of his return too, looking sharp in his 24 minutes and being involved in some encouraging moments as Mill chased the game. But the Lions would ultimately lose 2-1 to Blackburn after goals from Joe Rankin Cancelo and Callum Britton overcame Wes Harding's early strike. Uh, one of the positives of Barrett was the competitive return of Honeyman. He said, oh, I'm really pleased for George. Uh, he's been out for a long while with injury. Uh, it's his first match, so he's not fully match fit by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he's been out for a long while, but I thought he came uh, on and gave us a spark. He's got that energy. He's an energetic player. He's quite an infectious character. Uh, I'm just delighted to have a player back because we're bare bones at the moment. Honeyman made 38 league appearances last season. Joe Bryan became Mill's latest injury concern last night after hobbling off in the second half. Uh, missing already from the Blackburn game last night due to injury on Matija Sarkic, Sean Hutchinson, Ryan Leonard, Duncan Watmore, and Kevin Nisbet. So there you go. Uh, another one injured, another one back. Um, moving on to this from Mill FC. Do you want to buy a coat? Do you want to buy a coat? Uh, Sheffield Wednesday versus Millwall. Tickets are on sale now. Is this a game you wanted to go to? Uh, it's quite a long way away. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, seeing as we're playing better away than we are at home we probably should have not bought a season ticket and just saved that money for trips away uh, Mill travelled to Sheffield Wednesday in a Skybet Championship on Saturday the 11th of November kick off at 3pm and tickets will go on sale to season ticket holders from 9.30am on Friday the 27th of October uh, tickets will go on sale to members from 9.30am on, on Tuesday the 31st of October all Allo's Eve. Uh, tickets are priced at £27 with various concessions from £17 to uh, £5 for under fives. Uh, under 14s need to be purchased with an adult ticket. Uh, tickets will go off sale on 2pm on Friday the 10th of November. Uh, initial, initial allocation of 1,774 tickets. So there you go. So I'm sure more tickets will be available if we sell all of those. Is this a big game? Um, they're not very good. They're a bit of a basket case, aren't they? Um, but uh, they, they sack their manager for no reason. Um, the owner's a bit of a, a, a weirdo. But um, it might be one of those games where we might actually win. It might actually look good. So there you go. Uh, now... Other news today, contract signing. Uh, Nino Adam Malachi signs new Millwall contact, uh, contract. Uh, Millwall Club is pleased to announce that Nino Adam Malachi has signed a new long-term contract at the Den. Long-term, what does that mean? So that's two years, is it? So there you go, not just another year, given a couple of years. Uh, the 19-year-old left-back who's a regular fixture in Kevin Nugent's successful under 21 side has opted to put pen to paper and will continue his career in SC16. Adam Malakai has featured in the first team match day squad on numerous occasions as a substitute, but he's yet to make a senior appearance. Um, it feels good, Adam Malakai told me at UK. I'm buzzing. I couldn't wait to get it done. Now I've just got to keep going and carry on. I've been taking steps to get close to the first team, which is where I want to be. I feel like I'm getting much closer to that now. I'm going to keep pushing in training. And if I get my opportunity, I'm going to take it. I love every single bit of being in and around the first team. It's been a great experience for me. I want to be the next up-and-coming academy player to get into the first team. And hopefully that will come true. Well, there you go. Sounds good, doesn't it? He's been uh, very, very good for the under-21s. He's only 19, so he's got at least another two years there. Um, by, the, by the time you're 21, you should be in, the, in or around the first team. Um, obviously there was an opportunity for him to come on last night not taken not taken they chose to bring Murray Wallace on which I think 
kind of stunted our, our, our at times uh, going forward. Murray Willis just not having the vision, not having the space to run forward. He's being blocked off and not having the vision to pick people out. I'm genuinely just cutting the ball back to Jake Cooper, which like, what, what else can he do? There's no one there. And then you think if you bring uh, Malachi on, he's got that youthful exuberance. He doesn't really you give a shit. He'll just run forward. And then what if he loses the ball? Then they break and, and, and they score. So... I understand why Murray Wallace come on, but Murray Wallace as well, is he 33 now? But it's 34. The next year or two, there might be a space opening up on that left-hand side. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but uh, Adam Malachi is a very good player. Um, got a very keen eye for goal and a keen eye for a pass. Um, so there you go. Uh, moving on to this, also from millfc.co.uk. New stadium tour dates on sale. A new batch of stadium tour dates are now on sale. Step into Mill history. Uh, experience the magic within. Walk the path. Many Lions legends have taken a field of passion in this is 16 on our one hour guided tour. The Den is one of the most iconic football stadiums in England, making it the perfect place to learn all about the colourful history and heritage of Millwall Football Club. The guided tour will start in the Executive Lounge before stopping off at various different locations in the stadium, such as the Directors Box, uh, the Press Area and Paul Jiggins Media Suite. The tour is rounded off by taking the players' walk from the dressing room through the tunnel and out to the dugouts. The experience cannot end, making sure you grab a picture next to Oh, I think you need to update this uh, copy here, guys. Gary Rowett's seat. It's not Gary Rowett's seat anymore. I hope you've given me a good clean. I hope he's the, uh, the smell of his aftershave's not still on it. Um, Just call it the manager's seat, I guess. Um, Damn. Too soon. Too soon. Um, So there's one next Monday. Monday, the 30th of October, 1 p.m. Um, the one before the Southampton match is sold out. That game is the Poppy game. I don't know if they put an advert for that at the bottom of this. No, they haven't. Um, that game is the Poppy game. The armed service stuff will be uh, at the beginning of that game. Um, so that's sold out. There was one. Oh, there's one this Thursday, but that's sold out. It's the Halloween tour. Uh, obviously, it's half turn this week. Um. What we got? The one before the Coventry game is available so Saturday the 25th of November. Uh, Sunday the, uh, Saturday the 2nd of December before the Sunderland game. Uh, Wednesday the 6th of December, that's uh, just midweek, 1pm. Uh, uh, Saturday the 16th before the Huddersfield Town game, that's still available. And Wednesday the 20th at 1pm. So are the kids on school holidays by then? Uh, is that, that might be a good, good thing for a Christmas present. Wednesday the 20th of uh, December 1 p.m. Um, so here you go. The price is very reasonably priced. Um, I haven't been on the tour, so I don't know. Maybe it's just literally here's this, here's that, here's that. Is there any questions? Thank you. Goodbye. Take your pictures and off. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's like that, but because they don't they don't tell you how long it's going to be. Uh, it doesn't say how long it takes. So. Maybe it's not value for money, I don't know. Maybe I should do it one day and tell you how it is. Um, but, but there you go. Sometimes they have a player that take you around and that's a legend saw they have the money on that, I assume, to give to the player. I, hopefully they, they give them, money, them some money. Um, but there you go. So it costs 15 quid if you're not a season ticket holder. It's, does you get a discount if you're a season ticket holder. So there you go. These are all the dates coming up. Um, any birthdays, any... Like I said, Christmas presents, you want to book them. It's it's cheap, it's something to do. It's if you're visiting from abroad, have a look. Interesting. Obviously this these are just the pre match tours is just the pre match tour. You still have to buy a ticket for the game, that's not included. Obviously you can't go on the pre match pre match tour and then hide in the toilets and then pop out when the game's on. Uh this isn't a, a national rail train. Well, there you go. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.